The better we understand a problem, the more likely we are to solve it. But even more, if we really understand a problem, we will solve it before it even happens, right? So we'll put things in place to make sure that the issue doesn't arise. Hello everyone, welcome to Mind Blowing Health and Wellness with Violet. The reason I make these videos is to help people to understand that your mental health and physical health come together to create your overall sense of well-being. If you find this kind of content helpful, please consider subscribing. So we've all probably heard the story of the three little pigs, right? Three little pigs go off into the world to build their houses. One builds a house of brick, one builds a house of straw, one builds a house of sticks. And the quality of those houses is reflected in the materials that were used. As a matter of fact, Wolf comes along and is able to destroy the house of straw and the house of sticks quite easily. They're saved by that house of bricks. Okay. I'm showing you two houses right now. First house, older house, built in the 1900s. Second house, more modern house, built in the 2000s. What's important for, that I want you just to, in, in looking at the two houses right now to understand is that of course one is prettier because it's newer and the other one a little bit less pretty because it's a bit older. I do believe that everyone would agree that using good building blocks would build a good foundation for our body. Every single diet program, every single regime that I've ever heard of talks about quality foods. Whether you're doing a ketogenic lifestyle, where you're talking about high quality meats and vegetables, or whether you're doing any other program, they always talk about high quality meats, vegetables, right? Doesn't matter what the other program is or the standard American diet, when we're trying to be healthy, or whether it's any kind of calorie restriction diet. If we're trying to be healthy, quality meats, quality veg. Interestingly though, it's rare, unless it's some kind of fad diet, it's rare to hear a diet talking about using cookies, to hear a diet talking about using ice cream and cake and chips as part of their diet to help people to live a healthy life and build a healthy body. Yet, these are the foods that we are trying to use while building our good foundation. Processed foods, what would be considered junk foods. And the question is, is this really building a good foundation? So consider this, if you were going to build a house and you had $500,000 to build your house and you hire a contractor and you give him $500,000, so of course you recognize part of it's gonna to go to labor, so let's allot $100,000 labor for the contractor, you get to keep that. Then there'd be $400,000 worth of materials that you would think should go into building this house. Throwing these numbers out there just for reference points. Here's the thing. If you were having this conversation with the contractor and expected $400,000 to be used for the materials for your house, but the contractor came with $100,000 worth of materials, would you accept that? And my big guess is that most people, if I've given you $500,000 and you show up with $100,000, most people would be like, where did the other $300,000 go? And we wouldn't just accept that it got blown away in the dust. However, when it comes to our bodies, somehow we seem to be okay with this idea that we would use poor quality nutrients to build our body, expecting to have the same quality body that we would have gotten if we had used whole foods. I'm trying for everyone to really step back and look at that information and understand that it's impossible, right? If we use whole foods, we will get the results of whole foods. But if we use processed foods, we will get the results. So a body that's built with processed foods. Why did I show that first house, that house that was built in the 1900s? Well, what do we know about houses that are older? They were focused on using good materials. They were focused on constructing a product that was gonna last well into the future. Most houses that were built in the 1900s, and even some before that, we have some parliament buildings that are extremely old, right? A lot of government buildings are extremely old. Most of these buildings were built with the idea that they need to last well into the future, and they have, because the quality of materials that were used were high quality. However, if we look at the houses that were built in the 2000s, how many people were on HGTV on shows like Homes on Homes where they, their house needed to be rebuilt two years later? 
because poor quality material or poor craftsmanship was used in the building of the house. It was about speed and getting the house up as fast as possible, as cheaply as possible, rather than building a house that would last another 100, 200, 300 years. I know for a fact that my spouse lived that scenario where he bought a house that was purchased just as it was made and the following year, the floors had problems. The, fall, the year after that, the, the sliding door had problems. That there were actually issues in the house that sincerely, given that it was purchased brand new, shouldn't have been there. And as a matter of fact, I think there was also problems with the um, HVAC system. Multiple problems, multiple issues, multiple times of having to call back the contractor to fix this and fix that. Why? The quality of materials and the craftsmanship that goes into building a house determines how sturdy, how much longevity the house will have. Starting with good quality ingredients builds the best quality house. The same way that starting with good quality ingredients in our foods builds the best quality us. Now we take this a step further because the ingredients matter so much that even what you feed the ingredients matter. If I grow my vegetables in poor quality soil, I will have poor quality vegetables, which will then give me poor quality to build my body. If I feed my animals poor quality, then I will ingest what they've eaten, which is poor quality, and therefore I will not build the best body. As a nation, is it important for us to focus on providing the correct soil for the vegetables that we're growing for the people who will be eating them? I believe the answer to that is yes. As a nation, is it important for us to have animals that are fed well so that we can have meat that's nutritious and build us well? I believe so. The number one way that we can fight metabolic syndrome is to eat the appropriate food to help our bodies to build correctly. And if we don't eat the appropriate food, we will not build an appropriate body. And we will end up, again, engaging with metabolic syndrome because carbohydrates contribute to insulin resistance and insulin is an issue in metabolic syndrome. If we really want to fight metabolic syndrome, then we need to understand that a ketogenic lifestyle is one of the best ways to keep our insulin low. And so therefore, a ketogenic lifestyle is going to be one of the best ways to make sure that you don't eventually end up with metabolic syndrome. How are you building your house, right? I'm suggesting that as a true wellness warrior, we're always looking to be in the situation where we're doing the thing that's keeping our wellness at the peak. And in this case, that's giving my body the best quality foods that I can afford. And I've said this a bunch of times, that doesn't mean everything needs to be grass fed, although grass fed is better. But if I'm choosing between processed and grocery store, choose grocery store, right? Going to the grocery store and buying meat is better for you than buying any kind of processed protein. That processed protein is not gonna build the strong body that you need to help you to fight metabolic syndrome because that processed food is gonna give you a much greater insulin spike and that insulin spike has been shown to be what contributes to metabolic syndrome. If we want to solve metabolic syndrome, then we need to understand what diets help us to fight metabolic syndrome. And those diets, from what I can see, there's two, low carb, no, there's three, low carb, keto, carnivore. All other diets are gonna have you with really high insulin and high insulin is what creates metabolic syndrome. Build your house well. The fact that you've made it all the way to the end of this video helps me to understand that you appreciate these videos. Thank you. And if you'd like to contribute to the production of these videos, you can go to Patreon slash Violet Rivera. I now have a Patreon account. And there you can make a contribution, if you can afford it, make a contribution to the production of future videos. I wanna thank all my wellness warriors for stopping by. If you're not already a wellness warrior, please subscribe. And ring that bell so you know when my next video is coming out. Thanks for watching. Mind blowing health and wellness with Violet. I really appreciate it because I love talking to you guys and I really can't wait to talk to you in the next video.